Cause I'm the chicken, bitch. People are fucking annoying, man. Always trying to fucking sell something like no. I wanna fucking buy your shit. the arena. You can spend a lifetime with someone as a wife or as a mother, but you can never really know who they are. Something bad has happened to mom. Joy Delaney, mother of four, has gone missing. She will come back. Stop 
secrets will poison any family, and what you don't know can hurt you. This place tastes like excitement, anger, joy, and <laughs> spooky, Debbie. Oh, yes, I like it. <laughs> like that. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sleep too yeah, because my, my back is really hurting. <laughs> it's already 2 a.m. What the fuck? Yep. I thought it was like 1 a.m. And, and there's still 2 hours left and 30 minutes for you. Yeah. I didn't know. Bye. We're gonna dance now. It's me! <laughs> 
kill. Aced. has been slain. An ally has been slain. Unstoppable. An ally has been slain. This is where the final stand took place. This bridge. They held out for days. So many Icebond died, but we kept on fighting. We climbed over the bodies of our fallen to press the attack. But the Watchers still wouldn't die. Is Lope down? No! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Back up. Clever fox is never caught. Well, tired of the same old shit. Why do I even have this fucking layout, bros? It is. Where are we? Seven, seven.
I miss built over so much. Welcome to the Harmony of I just can't leave. Whatever new experiences await me today, okay. I'll meet them head on. Minions have spawned. It's a little frozen, but it's still good. I should have left home years ago. Oh, don't go. <sighs> You're not afraid of me, <sighs> are you? Remember that, you know. An enemy has been slain. Priceless. Now, hand over the gold. Welcome to the dig site.
reminds me of home. the wind singing. Fruit could erase that one. Nothing but the finest. Send the limitations of tech maturity. Team, bro, what the fuck are they doing? Shut down. Ah, <clears throat> oh, that was an enemy has been slain. That's my Thank <laughs> you. 
Not even Cloud Troop could erase that. Is this powerful? Just imagine what a true Ice Hex Tech device could do. Watch something.
didn't appear to me and and tell me this is what the passage means. I'm just using, you know, the wisdom that the Holy Spirit, you know, has given me and gives everybody. More theories on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube sent over by you guys. That's going to make us question reality. Join the Discord. Link is in the description down below. Nearly 16,000 pounds of sausage products from Hillshire brands are being recalled due to possible contamination with bone fragments. Pennsylvania's bone fragments. Where stores received this smoked sausage made with pork, turkey, and beef. So Hillshire Brands, the company responsible for Hillshire smoked sausages, recalled a lot of meat. What's crazy is some publications say bone fragments, while the rest say foreign objects. <laughs> Somebody Switch need up. to make up their minds because. Foreign objects and bones are two different things. Oh, they also right. claim the foreign objects are only in 16,000 pounds of the sausages. So I'm me. guessing they figured that out by doing what? They are urging anyone with these sausages to trash them immediately. Foreign objects that enters the body cause massive damage. Sometime to the point of no return. Be aware of what you eat, and then on top of that, I'm hearing too much stuff with this pork stuff. Y'all already know it's team no pork on our fork over here, but you know, <laughs> you know. I know I'm still gonna have my, my pork lovers in here, but it's too much stuff happening with the pork and, and all the unclean products. It's like, who was trying to tell y'all, but you know. I've never seen this happen before. I went to cut open a watermelon and a lot of liquid came out. Here's another That's one. That's the only cut I made, okay? Watermelon shouldn't sound I don't like think that. There's any watermelon in there. It's just water. There's no That's melon in the water. Interesting. Oh, I opened it. It's open. All right, it's just nasty. Not a vibe. Ew. So what is happening? What are they doing to this watermelon? Y'all, this is so disgusting. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I don't even buy these seedless watermelons. I go to Sprouts, get a seedless watermelon. We've seen this one in the last reaction. Yo, I'm up at Walmart right now. I see all the watermelon stuff going on uh, all over the world. Check this out. Where in, uh, 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 man, did you see that? Bro, it's got pressure behind it. What in the world? Thank you, Bino, for the video. Ain't no pictures in hip hop. Did you have, did you have, did you have a 401k? You want me to explain to you what hip hop is? That's what I'm trying uh, to get to. Let me explain to you what hip hop is. The worst loan you could ever make. When you sign to a major label, you, that money that they give you, let's, let's say they give you 800 grand, right? That's a loan. You have to pay back that loan with interest. So mm. if you don't make back that 800 grand, what they do is they put you in the red, but you can still be hot and you didn't make back that 800 grand. So you can still be hot, so they'll give you another album. And they'll give you, an, instead of 800 grand, they'll give you 1.2 this time, right? So now, but you're in the, still in the hole for that 800. You understand? But you now you got another 1.2. And if you don't make that, then you're just in the red for both, both. And this is a loan with interest that you don't get nothing out of. Hip hop is not meant for the artist to win. It's, it's wow. never been meant for the artist to win. And the more and more you learn, the more and more you read your contracts, the more and more it's disturbing. Somebody put me on game a long time ago. I forgot who it was or what it was, but the word contract has con in it. When have you known con to be a positive thing. Think about every con track you sign. They're conning you. I'll put this one in here, y'all. This is us. This is our culture and heritage. We're returning back to the most high. Hallelujah. Y'all watch my tribe, my blood, my tribe, my fam. Do they think? To Zion, the Messiah is coming. Are you ready? Where is?
Israelites from the tribe of Judah. This is what we do, we praise. The 400 years is up. That y'all is what I can proudly say I partake. That is a rebirth of a nation. Shout out to again, my blood, my tribe, my family. Rebirth of a nation, if y'all wanna know. I know y'all like, what do you do? What do you believe? Who do you get your teachings from? How do you know who you are? Rebirth of a nation. Look up Hebrew nation building on YouTube. You'll find everything. They will tell you what the world has taught you that was a lie and they will instill you with relearning the truth. If you're wondering what event that was, that was our Pesach. That was a powerful Pesach. Yeah, our chiefs did that. Shout out to my chief. Shout out to Malek Musha and Malek Yahusha. So do y'all remember in 2017, the Snapchat face mask filters was like the hottest thing? Was. In 2017, was. everybody was really rocking these filters. We was. I know what you're thinking, okay? 2017, right? Uh-huh. Was Snapchat trying to tell us something? Let me tell you something. Snapchat was not trying to tell us anything. Snapchat was just trying to let us have fun with family members and friends. Snapchat just wanted us to look cool with these filters on. And hey, there's no way Snapchat knew in 2017 that we were going to wear face masks in the near future. Mm. I mean, like, there's no way. If you think that Snapchat was trying to tell us something, you are crazy. <laughs> now, let me tell you why I don't believe that Snapchat <laughs> predicted or was trying to tell us what was going to happen in the near future. Because if Snapchat knew we were going to wear face masks in the near future, that only means that there are evil corrupt people. Yeah. Hmm. And some people believe that our government had something to do with this. Shame on you guys. Our government has never done anything evil to their own people. They wouldn't do nothing like that. So I just want to say to the government, thank you for loving us, caring for us, and keeping us out of harm's way. This is America. This is America. <laughs> I didn't even put two and two together. I was over here hyping it up. Like, yeah, them things were a thing. 2017, 2020. Why were we excited with posting Snapchat with a filter that covered most of our face and put, like, ears on us? Predicted programming. Boy, I know you lying. Ain't no hey. way. Ain't no way. Well, that's how you been getting me all this time. Yo, is that true? Thank you, Munchie, for the video. Thank you, Munchie, for the video. So you have liquefied aluminum running down the side of a grass fire. The window, if you look at the big old, like, almost like, the glass is just the melted. The fact that it's still yeah, stuff it coming ripping. out about this fire is So crazy. I don't know if you guys have figured this out yet, but the media has not been given access to Lahaina Town. They don't want pictures taken of anything in Lahaina town because they don't want you to see this this would be my guess How you pronounce so the it, only Lahaina? way this message is going to get out right now is if you until your fingers bleed for america start sharing this video the edge of the fire went to that little grass this is all this was all just grass no trees you can see a couple of trees right there it just went to the edge of the sidewalk i mean not even to the sidewalk it just went wow. inside of this fence and then it stopped right before it got to this guy's thing this guy's house. Thank you, Chris, for the video. Whenever God is mentioned at the Grammys or God is mentioned at the, the Oscars or football games, basketball games, or when, when, when you get a $100 million con contract, I wanna just thank God because without God and my mom and my family, I mean, it's kind of it. They don't talk about God no other time <laughs> publicly other than a big moment happening. And yet, right. People are worshiping the devil publicly. publicly all year long. The whole music video had devil worshiping in it. Y'all see this <laughs> Y'all see what's going on. So at the end of the day, man, I just had to really realize like, wow, man, Denzel Washington does not do an interview on a red carpet or a sit down interview. He does not do any interview.
talking and they're not doing that they doing either one or the other they're most likely talking. They're never walking. Thank you, DeAndre, for the video. So you've heard of this, right? It's the Great Wall of China. But what if I told you that the Chinese didn't actually build it? So who built it then? Well, what if I told you that the Great Wall of China was actually the Great Wall of Tartaria from the Moorish Empire? You know, the ones that they don't really want you to know about? I know, I know, crazy, right? Well, maybe you can answer me this then. If the Chinese built the Great Wall of China, then why are the steep sides facing towards them? Seems odd. Also, why are the lookout posts also facing towards them? You would huh. think it would make it easier to defend yourselves if you were facing the enemy, not yourself. Right. It's a little weird. So, like, that way they could see the enemy coming and they could properly defend themselves with bow and arrows or whatever they were using, throwing rocks. It just doesn't really make sense to build everything facing you, not away from you. Oh, and what about these old maps? Huh, what's that? Tartaria? That's funny. Maybe it's the Great Wall of Tartaria surrounding China to protect themselves from China. And then when the empire got taken out by the mud flood, the Chinese kind of just took credit for it because, you know, as we all know from history, the winners and the victors write the history. Just a thought. If you want some more content on Tartaria, then make sure you like this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and let me know what other topics you want me to cover. See ya. Oh, that's deep. Tartaria. I don't remember learning about that in school. Thank you, Jared, for the video. The Simpsons predictions or... Is there no fucking audio on this clip? What the fuck, dude? And here's the interesting part about this. Those of you who know about pharmaceuticals or even started to learn about pharmaceuticals, look at the correlation between cigarettes and cigarettes and alcohol, cigarettes and marijuana. You got to know when you're getting played at a high level here. Now they're talking about bringing down cigarettes and attacking cigarettes. Why? Because they have successfully switched out their investment. I told people nine years ago, I said they are going to demonize cigarettes and replace it with their miracle solution, which is marijuana after they legalize it. I mm -hmm. said they're going to make a lot more money on marijuana than they ever did with cigarettes in a shorter period of time. They're going to do it in a way where the people will accept it. They're going to do it in a way where the people are going to make it legalized. Governors are going to approve it. They're not going to let all the people out who they arrested and put in jail for carrying marijuana, but mm -hmm. they're going to let all their white counterparts invest in it and let some black folks invest in it now too. It's a game. When you are dealing with a system that is sincerely, wholeheartedly, in a calculated, strategic manner, planning to destroy you, but they have to do it in the most effective way as possible, meaning they have to do it in a way where you will accept it willingly, right. to where you're not going to fight against it, there will be no opposition, you're going to literally bow down and say, look, man, they finally came around, y'all, now yep. they get it. The government cares about us. The moment pharmaceuticals got their hands in marijuana, I said Monsanto's going to dip their hands in it too. And I said they're going to come out with mutant strains and manipulated marijuana, sell it to you as if it's natural, then arrest you for growing the natural. Wow. wow. There are chemicals in this medical marijuana. Again, mind you, I'm saying medical marijuana specifically. And literally kill you, destroy your sperm, which is what it's doing. Destroy your ovaries, which is what it's doing. Destroy your ability to connect, as you were saying, how your brain was not connecting with your body. American military was combing the streets all throughout this country, snatching up the original cannabis, snatching up the Indian hemp plant, snatching up the indica, whatever you want to call it, snatching it up. Why? Because they were utilizing it to experiment on the military. They did the same thing with LSD, the same thing with Molly, also known as MDMA. Every chemical that they legalized, they first tested on the military, including marijuana. They said, Dang. damn it, they own us. We have all these damn lawsuits from these cigarettes and this nicotine and this tobacco. We need to find a way to replace this damn thing. I was invited to a closed meeting with one of the advisors on drug policy to the United Nations. It was about 95 five people in this room he put up a slide on a projector where he was going over the move that the government was about to make when it pertains to marijuana he went over the investors he brought up bill gates gates been on it he brought up the founder of tommy hilfiger 
He yeah. brought up George Soros. Okay. Okay. These are the ones invested in the medical marijuana field, and you got to know who you're dealing with. This shit way bigger than Nino Brown. He said in about the next seven to ten years, what they plan to do is not only legalize it, they're going to promote it in certain products. Then they're going to promote it to children. He said they're going to come out with marijuana soda me. products, marijuana gummy yeah. products. So again, I'm just validating your point. Yeah. You said this medical marijuana is some different stuff, brother. It is not natural, and it is not what people should be touching. I know y'all see my face. I'm thrown off about Tommy Hilfiger. Why is Tommy Hilfiger, who makes clothes, a part of that? That doesn't even go hand in hand. And then y'all heard him say they targeting the children. Y'all know that's it's not my favorite thing to say, but it's my favorite thing to point out because it's so true. They are really trying to get everyone to stay like in this same mindset, the same movement, the same structure. So if they, because the thing is, you know, in order to change the world, you have to change yourself. So if you change yourself and you change the kids, you're ruining the program and the operation that the world is trying to implement. So if they can target your children, then they'll keep everybody at the same level. It's not going to be no people that's going against the grain or that's not following with what they're placing. If that makes what if that makes sense on what I'm saying. So if they can get to the kids before you can get to them, which is why school is the way it is. That's another story for another day. If they can get to them before you can get to them, they won. That medical marijuana is deep. And then on top of that, the fact that it's in everything, it's in sodas, they have it in candy. Y'all know I'm behind if I'm playing this. This is insane. The Chargers had real AI robots at their season opener. Look at how Why? weird these are. Wow. Shout out to my girl Amaya for the next couple of videos. World is changing its frequency and its vibration. It's already doing it. You know things are speeding up. Everybody knows that. Time is speeding up, everything is speeding up. And the Earth itself has a tone. I've heard this tone, it's recorded from satellites in space. The Earth has a tone, a frequency. That tone has changed and it is speeded up. They, scientists know this, it's very definite, that this is definitely, they have proved that it's changing. The frequencies and vibrations of the Earth are changing. As I said a while ago about dimensions, we're getting ready to shift into a totally new dimension. Hmm. We have to. The Earth has got to the point where they can't do anything else to help it. It just, we're just destroying so much here that it's going to have to be a separation to move into the new frequency. And they said the entire universe is watching. This is the greatest show on earth because it has never happened in the history of the universe before that an entire planet will make the shift at one time. Now, you know, in the Bible, it always talks about the new heaven and the new earth. I believe John of Pathos, when he had that vision, he was seeing a real vision. He just a book called Race, Tendencies, and Traits of the American Negro, in which he, pos he lays out all the numbers, and then he concludes that if we simply avoided allowing black people to have any access to health care, that within two or three generations, the whole race would die out, and that would solve the race problem in America. When Teddy Roosevelt, 1912, proposed a national health care system, you know, people said no because black people will get it. When Franklin Roosevelt proposed a national health care system, it was the same thing. We don't want black people to get it. When when uh, Truman tried horrible. it in 47, same thing. Don't want black people to get it. We, you know, we have to figure out a way to keep black people from using Medicare. And the way that they came up with was to have a 20% hole, a gap in Medicare, so that you had to pay 20% of your doctor's bill and your hospital bill, and that would discourage poor black people from showing up at the hospitals. Nearly 100% of the reason why the United States is the only country in the world that doesn't define healthcare as a right is because of creepiest videos on the internet. Cell phone being microwaved. We know that's cat. The names in the Bible have very important meanings. God gave him those names for a very specific reason. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan. Well, Adam means man. Right. Seth means appointed. Enos means mortal. Canaan means sorrow. Mahaliel means the blessed God. Jared means shall come down. 
Enoch means preaching. Methuselah means his death shall bring. Lamech means the despairing. And Noah means rest. So if you put it all together, man is appointed mortal sorrow, but the blessed God shall come down preaching that his death shall bring their despairing rest. Even the names in the Bible are trying to get a message across. Pretty amazing. There's a good book about the Chinese language, The Discovery of Genesis, it's called, showing how the Chinese, original Chinese characters, not the ones they use today, but the original ancient Chinese pictograms were actually telling the creation story. For instance, the symbol for boat is eight mouths in a vessel. Noah's Ark had eight people on it. The Chinese symbol for garden is dust plus breath plus two people in an enclosure. There's been a sequel, God's Promise to the Chinese, written about God's promise in the Chinese language. The Chinese symbol for righteous is a person under a lamb. The only way to be righteous is to be under the lamb. Mm. Their own words were telling them. Nice. Mm. Thank you, Free, for the video. I really cannot believe it. I don't get too... I'm telling you. I'm telling you right when the phone just hits different. Alluded to what you saw, but like, I, we just want to know, like, you know what? Yeah. What did you see? Um, I mean, thanks for asking that. Um, but I have been told that I cannot comment on it right now. I see. So, I see. I'm sorry. They say every single holiday that we celebrate is celebrating one of the seven deadly sins. Oh, every I single it. holiday. Oh, Think I about it. it. The easiest one: Valentine's Day celebrates the sin lust. of lust. lust. Okay, okay. Thanksgiving that celebrates the gluttony. sin of gluttony. Uh, gluttony, yeah, yeah, because you're because you're eating a lot. Mm -hmm. You're overeating. You're taking too much of the more than you need. Yeah. Now Christmas. What do you think that is? Christmas. Greed. 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 Yeah. Overconsumption and excess. Okay, okay. Right. Wanting more of something. That's what I don't celebrate. Celebrating oh, shit. gifts. Mm -hmm. We're just celebrating gifts. We're not really even celebrating. The birth of Christ because people yeah. are so focused on the gifts of St. Patrick's Easter. Day. It's sloth because people get blacked out drunk. Oh, what the? Oh. Yeah. Now, Easter. This one's interesting. I don't know. The Easter. holiday of Easter. What what sin would it be? Easter. I don't know. Check this out. This one gets deep. Okay. So they say it's now why would y'all cut it they be knowing what they're doing. They smart. I gotta give it to them. Them are the most strategic people I have seen on TikTok. So what do you guys think Easter partakes in when it comes to the ISIS. seven deadly sins? I'm honestly not shocked and not surprised. Your yeah. tells us to not celebrate stuff for various reasons. And I know that's definitely one, but it's other things too. Like all those celebrating of the holidays, like you're actually celebrating and worshiping deities and, and idols, idolatry. Like you're really doing that. You have to really look into the root on why you celebrate these things. He didn't call us to celebrate that. He called us to celebrate holy days. And if you notice the holy days, they got holidays from the holy days. When people have Easter, we're usually celebrating Passover. But really look into why you celebrate what you celebrate. Because that Christmas, you cannot say, oh, I'm celebrating it for because of his birth. Oh, really? Where, where, where are his gifts at? Oh, Easter. Oh, it's just the, what, what does laying eggs have to do with his resurrection? Eggs, resurrection. The list goes on and on. Thank you, promo. We busted our and this is what we get nobody called us our phones didn't work from five in the morning 10 o'clock when i went to work the fire was still there there was no water <laughs> tell me if that's not coincidence no water no warning and everybody talking about the satellite city before the fire Lahaina gonna be the first satellite city. Well, hey, Jeff Bezos, you got what you wanted. Oprah, you got what you wanted. And the guy who owns the nut, you got what you wanted. All over. That's what happened. We need help in Lahaina. <laughs> Who's gonna come now and sure, ask okay. us, can I pray for you, Auntie? Thank you. Can I help you? Look, trying to cut her off. Because all we got so far was $700, and we don't know who to call or anything. It's culturally insensitive in that zone. Every cell phone user in the U.S. will be part of a nationwide emergency alert coming up in the fall. On October 4th, around 2.30 Eastern, every single phone, TV, and radio will be going off. But it's okay, guys. Don't panic. FEMA and the FFC planned a nation emergency alert test for October the 4th, 2023. So whenever it starts, it's going to last for at least one minute. Everybody in the... So whenever it starts, it's going to last for at least one minute. Everybody in the U.S. will experience it. 
Again, this is all gonna happen to every TV, radio, and phone in America all at once. In America. FEMA and the FCC are coordinating with wireless providers to ensure that all systems are prepared to send out alerts in the case of a national disaster or attack. So yeah, it's basically just an emergency testing. But for what? Are we having an emergency soon? Ha ha ha. Exactly. But what do you guys think I'm about not. this? Will you be turning off your phone when it happens? Or are you going to keep your phone on with all that noise? Beep. Let me know in the comments. You will not believe what medicine the FDA just said no longer works. So if you guys ever had like a stuffy nose, you know, your face has been hurting or, you know, you've had like an allergic reaction or something. So your parents have given you some Benadryl or some Sudafed and, it, you know, it sometimes it makes you drowsy, maybe not. Well, yeah, the FDA just said that none of those work anymore. The FDA just said that virtually all over the counter decongestions just don't work. They found that the Benadryl and the Sudafed, Robitussin and other things like that literally do nothing. So has it been like a placebo Literally. this whole time? Mm. So it turns out right. these pills are gonna be taken off the shelves pretty soon across the entire country, but the nasal sprays are gonna get to stay. A patient advocate from New York said that these should have been taken off the shelves a long time ago. So basically all of our medicine cabinets in our house now is gonna have to be scrubbed of these things because apparently they don't work, which now I wonder every time my parents gave me one, why did it always help? Was it just all in my head the whole time? What exactly. do you guys think? Do you, guys take this stuff? do you have it in your house right now? I don't trust them because why would you just randomly, a random day out the week, out the month, you're just like, oh, these medicines don't work no more. No, I got to question that. Because anything y'all say, I want to do the complete opposite. That's really what I want to do. The medicines has worked for me. It hasn't been an issue for me. But what I will say is I am kind of diving in more to like natural remedies of how to cure certain stuff and how to heal certain things because i don't want to depend on medicine y'all know with the world going the way it's going i want to be able to be like okay i know from me being in the wilderness i can't eat off of that tree oh i can mix this this leaf with this water with a pinch of salt you know what i'm saying like little stuff like that to help me cure or to heal or to better whatever sickness, whatever root is messed up. GTA 6 will destroy humanity. Yes, you heard that right. Didn't even come As you yet. know, the video game GTA 6 is planned to release in 2024. But what if I told you the goal of the game is to control the population? Many believe that GTA 6 will be so realistic that people will become completely addicted to it immersing themselves in the virtual world instead of living in reality. That's already this could lead now. humanity into a situation similar to movies like Ready Player One or yeah. Free Guy. It could be the perfect way for the elite to control us, keeping us completely obsessed with the game. But what could this actually mean for humanity? At first, everything would stay relatively stable, but as time passes, more and more people would get addicted. They would stop working, and soon after, people would start dying left and right. People could become so addicted that they will forget to eat, drink, and sleep. But what's your opinion on GTA 6? Do you think it could cause the end of humanity? Subscribe and share with a friend for part two. I don't think so, but only if you let it. But I will say when I watched Ready Player One with that, what is, what is this? Not AI, it's not MetaQuest. Uh, it's Meta, there is a MetaQuest, but the artificial reality, am I saying the AR. When I seen Ready Player One and I seen the AR and what was happening, I said, this is going to take over. This is going to be the one. Because you have people living in a metaverse world and they're stuck in it because their life is like so much happier in that world than in the real world. Y'all see it with the Apple Vision Pros. When I seen that, I was like, oh my gosh. Do you guys have one? Do you? There's a theory that any rapper that comes out with a song called Armed and Dangerous, <laughs> they die. Listen, Juice World came out with a song, Armed and Dangerous, <laughs> passed away. Yeah. Pop Smoke came with a song, Armed and Dangerous, he passed away. King Von yeah, came out with a song, artists. Armed and Dangerous, he passed away. Now it gets deeper, it gets deeper. So Biggie, he didn't have a song called Armed and Dangerous, yeah. but he had a song called Notorious Thugs, right? Okay. The first mm -hmm. line in the song, Gavin, the first verse, he says, Armed and Dangerous. Oh. Ain't too many can hang with us. Armed and Dangerous? That phrase, Armed and Dangerous, is dead for all rappers, bro. Now listen, now what's even crazier, we talked about PMB, remember? Yeah. So 
Meek Mill. Oh yeah, Meek Mill. He had a song. It wasn't called Armed and Dangerous. It was called Dangerous. It was called Dangerous though. And who was features on that song? Who? P and B Rock. No. You're kidding me. And that's one of his biggest hits. There's, some, there's something wrong with that phrase, armed and dangerous, in the rap community. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. I'm so cozy right now. He Think about cozy. how terrible this advice is that you're about to see just in general, and then magnify it by how bad it turned out to be for this situation. But how, how crazy of a thing for your people that are supposed to care about you to encourage you to think like this. To think that they can do their own research. Don't do any of your own research. Doing your own research is associated with conspiracy theory circles. This go it alone approach, doing your own research. It can have serious consequences. You should get prison time for even questioning the vaccines. Can we all stop saying, I need to do my own research? That phrase, do your own research, four words, four little words that are hurting America. Doing your own research hurts America. Everybody has a supercomputer in their hand that empowers them to do their own research, and that's the problem. You must not do your own research. Oh, I need to do my own research. I don't under understand what that means. I'm doing my own research. You can you can't do your own research unless you're a scientist. Oh. Do your own research. That made no Maybe sense. Maybe you've told yourself you're playing it safe. You just want to wait and see since this is a new. No. Roll the up and get the. People spread the virus. Who's she, who she talking? Who's she talking to? Bible verse that I live off of is study to show yourself approved, and I truly believe that when it comes to the bible that's with life in general study to show yourself approved so the fact that you have people on here telling you you can't do your own research don't do your own research why would you do only science is so much in detail i can describe but the, i just that was probably the most dumbest thing i've heard so they're now they're pushing out you shouldn't do your own research no the thing is if i'm putting some stuff into my body if i'm trying to heal it if i want to you know do stuff to it you mean tell me don't do research but go off of what's being told that's what messed us up in the first place when you think about church and and the bible these you go off of what pastor said but you don't ever read it for yourself no read it for yourself because that's when you fully see you're fully aware because you can't just be like going off of what a person said you have to go get these things yourself see these things yourself and to relate to these things to be able to basically if somebody question you can quote unquote, study to show yourself approved. So the fact that they're telling people that not to do that is crazy. I know they're talking about from a worldly standpoint, but I'm talking about from a biblical and worldly standpoint. So I'm bringing two in one. Theories on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Again, if you guys want your video feature on here along with a shout out, please add the Discord. The link is in the description down below. Shout out to everyone that has sent in videos. I get so excited when I see new UFO footage, right? Because it's amazing. It still winds me up that a lot of it is blurry, but sometimes we're getting like 4K footage now of uh, of UFOs. But I'm still yet to see a 4K footage video, which is close up, right? <laughs> With all these phones now, you can zoom in and and I mean, we we can zoom into the moon and see craters, but we can't zoom into a UFO in 4K. Really? Come on right so but every time i see a ufo footage i get so excited all right and there's loads of them it's getting to a stage now where i can't even remember what i've seen and what i haven't seen all right but with I, I i'm managing my emails pretty pretty well at the moment so i'm sort of putting them into folders of what i've seen what i haven't seen so i can go back and refer to them and right it's amazing so if you're into ufos and aliens and the paranormal mate Please subscribe. We are on our road to a million subscribers. So if you could subscribe, it doesn't cost anything. It'd be amazing. Okay? Bro, just play the now, goddamn um, shit. I have, fuck, I hate people who fucking beg for subscribers, this is, man. Thing, fuck. Right? This, is, this is the thing. What they're just saying the goddamn has got clips, to be legitimate. Bro. Because, first of all, He's already, he's just said, no, we didn't go to the police. I don't think they were mad. So he, he understands, like, look, I'm probably sounding quite crazy right now but this is legit what i saw so he said he saw a rock a glowing red rock and he sh he shone his torch on it um and it started spinning what the hell and so there's another one as well and this one again i've not i've not heard it i've just seen uh, the, the guy started making uh, a, a drawing about it but this is a couple of policemen again in 1967 listen to this 
Patrol car, Delta 9. Now, I've got to be honest with you. I don't know whether I've shown you this one before. I don't think I have, because I don't remember what they're talking about. With PC Roger Willey and PC Clifford Waycott, based at Oakhampton, were out on night duty patrolling the A3... Oakhampton, mate! That's up the road, man! 72 Hatherley to Holsworthy Road. Precisely one minute past four o'clock this morning, they sighted an object 400 yards away from them at a treetop level. They reported immediately to Oakhampton Police Station, where further men were brought out. PC Willie, you were driving the patrol car at the time. Can you describe it to us? Oh, PC Willie. <laughs> The object was uh, likened unto a cross, um, although the inner parts were um, something similar to the points of a compass, and they were quite um, blurred, the inner part of the um, cross. But it was how, brilliant, how, brilliant white, brilliant light. How in fact did you see it? I mean, did it make any kind of noise to you? No, there was no noise. Look at that. The, the first time we saw Mate, it. Mate, I've, I've, I've just got to sh show you something, right? Because somebody sent me on emails the other day a picture of all, like, loads of different types of uh, UFOs that has been uh, spotted, okay? I want to see if that is on there. And I, lo I lost the email, okay? I it'll probably take me a while to find it. So I just went on Google. I found it again. You can find it on Google, right? Let me just, let me just show. Let me just show you here. Um, here we go. Let me just see if it's... That one's not on there. But I'm sure I've seen that one somewhere before. No, it's not on there. Okay. All right. No, no worries. No worries. Just thought it might be. The, the first time we saw it was when it was just above treetop height and ahead of us. And from then, um, Consul Willie just uh, said, here we go then, and uh, we drove off after it, if you know what I mean. What kind of speed were you traveling at? We were traveling very fast. Did it make any kind of sound? Um, no, no sound that I heard at all. It was, um, there was no outside uh, noise apart from the noise of the car itself. And the acceleration, the acceleration away from us was terrific. So really, we didn't get under it to hear any sound. But you were really close enough to be absolutely certain that your eyes weren't fooling you. Oh yes, uh, it was just in front of us. <laughs> there was no question whatsoever that. Um, this was a pigment in the imagination. It was, it was definitely there. It was definitely either manned uh, by some sort of being or remotely controlled. It was definitely being controlled to view our car or. You or had the, the feeling that it was watching you. Definitely, yeah. yes. Oh wow, mate! Ooh, so they think it was watching them, mate. <laughs> Man, I could listen to that stuff all day, mate. I could listen to that stuff all day. Right, okay, so that's a couple of uh, uh, interviews to get the cockles warming, <laughs> right? So I'm going to show you some other um, old school footage now. I've got this one as well, but should I show you it? No, mate, I can't, no, 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 because that's going to be a, a, a whole new video, mate. I was toying whether to show you this, because when you look at it, you just think, oh my God, Ben, that is so fake. It's unreal. Brilliant. However... <laughs> I'm going to show you it anyway, because I always try to think to myself, hang on a second, when you're talking about alien technology, I suppose anything can be possible, right? Things would look and move very weird, right? So I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. Someone sent this to me, I'm like, and I've been, I've seen it so many times, but check, check this out and let's just talk about it, right? Wow, c'est quoi ce truc? Oh, hell no, that shit's fake as fuck. <laughs> right? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Right, wait. Please put in the comments, I, I really want you to now, please put in the comments if you think that was real or fake, just press, just type one fake or one real. That's all, okay? One fake or one real. Because I want to know, like, what your limits are. 
the only the, the reason i'm just right first of all i think i'm gonna play Des devil's advocate i think it's fake because I think quite a trick. the way it moves there right it's very like um it's very robotic. It's very sort of, I don't know, it doesn't flow very well, right? And also the shadow is a little bit s suspect, yeah? And I've tried to, let me just try to, you can do this frame by frame. I've done it frame by frame here. You can, like, this also intrigues me. I'm sure I've seen an, a UFO before with a tail like that. And I can't think of where I've seen it, but I've seen it somewhere before right and if we go frame by frame like the shadow sort of disappears very abruptly yeah but this is the devil's advocate i think it could be real because look how it moves We're talking alien technology. These things, right, can turn on a dime, apparently, right? We, we've seen other UFO videos where they turn on a dime, like boom, boom, like that, gone, boom, right? And it's just this little bit here. It's moving alien-like, right? It's moving with absolute precision and that's what i expect an alien craft to be able to do if these can just go from zero to mac billion right <laughs> in milliseconds why can't something like that move like that right so I, I could argue i could sit here and argue both sides for hours <laughs> yeah and and also why i thought it was real okay i'm carrying on with the the real argument Look at the, like, the reflections of this metal. The, the lighting is very well done. And when you're talking about the shadow, like, the shadow is bending around the soffit at the top here, you know? <sighs> man, I don't know, mate, I don't know! I, honestly, I threw it away for so many times. I, every, every time I kept on looking at the video, I was like, nah. No, no, no. But I was like, hang on a second, right? So that's the first one. Now, another one which, again, which could be sort of like, mm, but it's damn cool to look at, right? Check this out. Right. Okay, here we go. This is incredible, if it's real. Oui, en 2013, ça se passe en Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes. Un agriculteur vient voir ses vaches dans, de, il vient voir ses vaches dans son champ et voilà ce qu'il voit. 2013. Il vient avec sa petite fille d'ailleurs, qui ils vont paniquer, ils vont avoir peur. Wait. Wait. I've not seen it from start to finish. <rire> on entend la petite qui, qui pleure, qui, il, a, il a pris un coup, de, un coup de speed et on peut le comprendre. Hein. Euh, L'agriculteur, il va tranquillement dans son champ avec sa, sa fille pour voir les vaches, il voit ça, il dit mais qu'est-ce qu'il va zoomer dans C'est quoi dans mon champ là alors, alors, Il va zoomer la vidéo, alors c'est avec la qualité d'époque forcément, hein, c'est pas les smartphones. Euh... Just, uh, just wait before you start typing, Ben, this one is BS, ok, just, just wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do the devil's advocate. Dernière génération qu'on a aujourd'hui, hein, mais voilà, plus on zoome dans l'image, plus, plus, plus ça fait des, des, des pâtés de pixels, mais néanmoins on voit bien ce qui se passe et c'est euh, juste hallucinant euh, cette... Euh... Oh, what the, mate, what? 
des, des, des pâtés de pixels. Mais néanmoins, on voit bien ce qui se passe. Et c'est euh, juste hallucinant, euh, cette, euh, oh, cette, cette mais... vidéo. Donc, Auvergne-Rhône-Alpes, hein, c'est été pris. Hein. Oh, yeah, OK, 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 OK. Right, hang on, just hold on a minute. Just hold on. Just wait. We're going to watch the whole thing. Alors voilà, on voit des, euh, des espèces de bonhommes, euh, petits également, lorsque c'est, on ne distingue pas très bien si c'est des, des petits gris, euh, on voit qu'ils sont assez fins, assez petits. Euh, je dirais à la louche comme ça, 1m50 ou je ne sais quoi. Euh, euh, c'est juste hallucinant, euh, cette vidéo. Celle-ci aussi avait à l'époque disparu très vite. Si il y a des mots français dans ce s'il vous plaît, pouvez-vous le pour moi Voilà, donc... Euh, on sait qu'aujourd'hui, voilà, en 2023, c'est officiel. Hein, L'US Navy, hein, ce n'est pas nous qui le disons encore une fois, euh, c'est officiel. Euh, il y a bien des ovnis. Donc, ils enquêtent dessus. Euh, la NASA également est dessus. Mais il se fait des Ils enquêtent à fond pour savoir euh, est-ce que certaines races, peut-être, qu'ils ne connaissent pas, euh, est-ce que ça serait euh, pour voir si ce n'est pas une menace également pour. Euh... <rire> I know what you're thinking. Right, Ben, come on, let's say devil's advocate. <laughs> right. right there looks real right i know that the the, the the footage is really bad but it looks real oui, en 2013 ça se passe en auvergne rhône alpes and to fake Mais... something for back then i mean it, uh, okay it's only two i'm guessing this is 2013 because of the says 2013 at the bottom right but like i say you've got to try to remember Oh, mate, I suppose 2013 is later on when, you know, social media and stuff like that and people wanting to write books and things. But I don't know. I don't know. It's it's really annoying because it is hard to believe, especially when you've got little like men like this. Yeah, little little green men, <laughs> little gray grays. I mean, if this is legit, mate, that's the best footage ever ever right like, we've literally seen a gray alien going into a, a, a into a ufo and effing off into the sky mate right flashing away but i don't know mate like why would i suppose the question is why would you go to that extent isn't just having a ufo flying off here good enough <laughs> right to fake something yeah isn't that just good enough mate Yeah. And look. Hang on. Hang on. I did pause it a while ago before, so it's down here, and to try to see like if if the grass sort of glows up, and it does, but it's so difficult you can't see like blades of of grass glowing up on one side. It's just sort of like a it's like a paintbrush blur of white everywhere, you know. So it's difficult, but it's like what I'm trying to say is, is it that good enough? To fake if you want it as a fake something is that good enough and then especially up here right that's another good one why would you go that far to say all right maybe they still don't believe us throw some aliens in there it's a bit of a risk take right yeah look at these aliens mate no it's see, see there i'm off mate i'm off i'm getting a ufo je dirais à la louche comme ça, 1m50. Et où sont-ils allés Et regarde, regarde ça, mec. Regarde ce UFO ici, avec le truc. Right? Uh, C'est disparu très vite. Maintenant, uh, ce UFO, ce hein. UFO, let's just go back. Boom. Right, we've got 1, 2, 3. Look. So, dome with a little nobble at the top. Dome with a little nobble at the top. Maybe hmm. it's got like it's got it's got like a little nipple at the top. I think it could be It's almost flat at the bottom and domed at the top, right? With a little flat at the bottom domed. I reckon it's C mate. 
I reckon that's C. Yeah? A Wimslow. January 1966. Oh, look, hang on. 1954. Oh, mate, I don't know, but this is so damn good. <laughs> anyway, right, okay, on to the next one, on to the next one, all right? On to the next one. Here's another old footage, yeah? Seven seconds, mate. Look at this. This is the same similar type of um, shape UFO as well. Look, bang. Look at that, mate. And that little bit there, the little sort of back and boom. Moved similar. Listen, look. Boom. See how it goes that? Bang. Mate, that just doesn't look fake. I'm sorry. It doesn't look fake. The only... Mm, right, okay. So it moves similar. How it just like... It moves similar to this one here, right? Remember what we just saw? Yeah? Um, It moves similar to this one. Right? But the only thing I'm trying to... I think is a little bit sus suspect is why why does it go back and then forward why like it's almost like it's catapulting itself off of something why do you need to go back and like did you just change your mind <laughs> but back forward back forward It's pretty intriguing, though, mate. It's pretty intriguing. Now, right, here's another one. Man gets attacked by UFO. Now, I've got a feeling I've shown you this one. But I don't think I have. <laughs> what? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I think it's because I've seen it a couple of times. I just can't remember if I've shown you. But look, I'm going to show you this. Look at this, mate. Oh, my God. That's cool. The hell is it? The that? same sort of shape again. I never <laughs> mate, this thing hits him. I don't know about this one, mate. I don't know about this one. <laughs> I don't know about this one, mate. I don't know. Look. What's that? What's that? It just drops off here. Look, it goes right to him and past him. Hmm. Hang on a second. Nah, I'm not having that one. I think that was I think that one that one, I think that one is BS. Reason being is because look at the size of it up there, right? That's gotta be what, maybe 150 meters away? Yeah? And then it's right on top of him. And it's it's only... I mean, what's, what's the width of that? What's the width of that? Like, 15 foot? It's hard to tell on there. I mean, it's covering the, the width of the, the lens. Yeah, I don't know about that one, mate. I think that one is... That one is... Oh, my God. I never... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, it's hard to even play devil's advocate of that one, right? I mean, I could do. We could go straight out there, mate. Because again, like I say, any possibilities. The possibility is it morphed into a smaller shape as it went down to try to beat him up and then flew off. <laughs> All right, I wanted to show you anyway. I don't think I have shown you that one. Probably because I looked at it and I've gone, no, that, 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 that's rubbish. Oh yeah, mate. I have got some, my God, I have got some videos for you to see, mate. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to see. In fact, I might do, I might do, I might do this one straight after. Okay. Right. Okay. This one is really peculiar because I've often thought, we've, we've said before about, um, 
UFOs coming down and then underneath in the center it opens up and then one of those little mini UFOs come out remember the the, the video with the carpenter um that looked up and he saw that little mini UFO I think it was in was it in Brazil that for me in my head is like a little little mini mothership but there's got to be I think a bigger mothership and this video talks about this uh, uh, uh israel a giant ufo in 1996 right this has got to be the mother of all motherships right look at this but this amazing flying structured craft has no earthly explanation it was seen over the small farming village of kibbutz hatsor for three consecutive nights in august of 1996. this video shot by a young resident of the kibbutz shows a bizarre looking partially lit craft with strange red markings and rectangular shapes yeah this is the one that's like quite weird because it's actually colorful this one right this is why they think it's a mothership but also it's not just this bit this bit here and there's another bit back here as well which is lighting up which shows you this the length of this thing when the camera zooms in we see what appears to be a light on the craft's left side take on amazing structure. The structure, some say, resembles a huge flying building with hallways. 17-year-old Amiche Shoa was stunned to be awakened by the strange bright object in the night sky. Mate, he imagine watched... seeing this stuff it, it, like in modern day technology. They're talking about this like hallways? Because this thing is going to be absolutely huge. I mean, look how much they're zooming in on it. And look at this here. It's still going back here, mate. But maybe it's cloaking itself or something. In amazement, as it hovered above for hours, he waited for its return the next night. Video camera in hand. By the third night, word of the strange craft had spread. And some 60 members of the kibbutz came out to see it in all its glorious... By the third night... This thing's been flapping about for three nights now, at least. Oh, this time, Michi's batteries failed, but he managed to film the odd craft again using a neighbor's camera. Look what he managed to capture on the Oh, his neighbor's camera's even better then, right? The Look at it. It's got, it's, it's, it's got either side of it. This is straight from bloody Star Wars, man. The sure is so massive that the illuminated portion is said to represent only five to seven percent of its actual size. Five to seven percent. Five. Like say. Okay. So let's just say that that my mobile, right, or cell phone, if you're American, is five percent of that ship. So we're talking, mate. We're talking five, like five ten. Like we're talking something like that. In fact, like that. More than that, mate. That's huge. Is this the design of some otherworldly architect? How are they getting that percentage when they can only see two other dots? As incredible as it sounds, some UFO researchers claim it could be housing alien inhabitants. La, 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 la. Giant aliens, did he say? Aliens is described in the giant aliens is described in the Bible. Oh, mate, mate, mate! Giant aliens described in the Bible. What? Now I gotta read that. I gotta read that Bible. I tried a couple of times. Oh, mate, giants! Oh, mate, that reminds me of another video I've got to do. I've got to do. <laughs> Giants in caves. Hang on. Look! Oh! No one has ever seen one like this before. So it was captured on two separate nights, one separate morning. Over 100 people uh, uh, saw it. Barry Chamish is one of the most respected UFO investigators in Israel today. He believes that this is one of the most extraordinary UFOs ever caught on tape. But we're dealing with... Mate, imagine nowadays if we saw that now with all of our drones. I've got a drone, right? I've got a drone. Yeah? I've got a drone, right? 
I'd be out there like a flash. 4K, baby. Like, knocking on, like, boom, 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 knocking on the window. Hello? This is what soar. It's a very large UFO. This thing is not just a, um, a round disc. This thing's got windows. It's got two rows of windows or vents or who knows what on earth they're shaped. Because they are very odd, offbeat squares. And they managed to get a close-up of these vents. I mean, really close. You're right inside them. Oh, and I think it'd be teeth for all you know. And you have no idea what's attacking you. But this orange structure, I believe it's energy vents or something. Something to do with venting energy. The kibbutz is near an Israeli Air Force base. But Chamish is convinced this is no military craft. Hang on, so hang on a second. If it's been there for three days, it's just, something's just occurred to me, right? If it's been there for three days, where's the daylight footage? Everything is wrong. The dimensions are wrong. The squares aren't quite squares. If it was a military vehicle, it hasn't come back. It's never been the likes of it. It's never been seen ever again. Then what was hovering above Israel for three consecutive nights that summer? Obviously, if this is up in the sky, there's nothing that's supposed to be up in the sky that looks quite like that. It apparently is some object which has got that sort of a size to it. In the well, hang on. You said that sort of... He said that sort of a size. So how did he say earlier that that was 5%? If that's the size there, that's like, I don't know, one-fifth? This level of blow-up. When they zoom in and get a structured image out of this, uh, it's just plain... It doesn't look like anything that I've ever seen. It doesn't look like uh, any ordinary UFO, that's for sure, but it certainly doesn't look like an airplane or a blimp, uh, balloons or whatever. But this would have to be considered to be... Un what are people saying about it? Where's the daylight footage? No one's saying about that. Like, if it's been up there for three days, where's the daylight footage? Okay, right, whatever. What do you reckon about that, mate? That was epic. Look at this one as well, mate. Look at this old school footage here, man. This is incredible. Now, in this final piece of footage, we will once again be looking at a cockpit camera view. This time from the MiG-21. The camera plane and three others were scrambled to intercept an unknown craft flying at very high speed, which is visible. I bet you, I'm sorry, but when I see these um, airplanes, okay, like the, the, the military airplanes, I bet there's, if there's any pilots watching, okay, or ex-military pilots, just imagine having the opportunity to fly a ufo mate imagine if they found a ufo which was in working order one of these disc things that you could just propel yourself like mac billion in seconds all right would you fly it would you fly it mate Boom! <laughs> obviously you wouldn't feel the mac inside that thing because it's right but mate how many pilots would try to give that thing a go like flight of the navigator Oh, I'm getting bird driving up and down the same old street. I gotta find a new place where the kids are hit. Here is a large cylindrical shaped object. And as the Russian planes close in, the UFO suddenly picks up speed and disappears. Here it is once again. You'll notice the cylinder seems to be traveling at about the same speed as the mix until about here. And then it seems to increase its speed, which, according to pilots, must have reached at least Mach 3 in about 10 seconds. Mach 3 in about 10 seconds? <sighs> hey, that, that's dawdling, right? That is do that's in first gear. Mach 3 in 10 seconds? That's first gear, mate. 3 in about 10 seconds. A lot of this footage was declassified after the Soviet military failed to identify the object seen here. This one shows an interception attempt by MiG pilots. There were many cylindrical object interceptions that were reported and investigated. We were interested in the high speed potential of this object. The size of this one is estimated to be about twice the size of a MiG-21. What? With technology available to us and the Americans, it should not be able to move as fast as it does. Oh, mate, it reminds me, it reminds me of this one. Uh... It reminds me of that one. Look at that, mate. That is so beautiful.
Look at that. Boom. Look at I know we've seen it. I know. But look at it, mate. Wow. Hey, this footage is still interesting because I don't think the Russians had any idea what they were dealing with here. Their fighters were at least as good as ours, and yet here is something that is completely beyond their capability to intercept. The acceleration rate of That's the Tic Tac, right? That's the Tic Tac. Now that he's... He's, he did that diagram. That just looks like the Tic Tac. The acceleration rate of this thing is impossible for any aircraft that we know of. I just, right. Mm, I'm going to, I'm going to skim through this video here because I want to show you some of the, the, like the highlights of it. Right. But look, look at this. Look at that. Keep, remember the shape. Remember the shape guys. Right. Bang. This is UFO sightings in Switzerland, 1994. I mean, 1994 seems like yesterday, right? And look at the footage. 1994, mate. I was 14. Seems like yesterday, right? And look at the look, 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 look. Sind das da auch mit Modell, mit Doppelbeleuchtungen oder anderen? Look at that and look at the top bit. Remember that. Remember the, all the de the decorations at the top here. Fälschige hat aber den Keimdienst gemacht, sagt der Billy Meyer, und als Beweis hat er die Außerirdischen selber fotografiert. Es sind Plejadier vom Planet Era vor allem zum die Menschheit zu warnen. Sie warnen vor der Überbevölkerung, vor atomarer Versuchung und vor einem Ozonloch. Wer weitere Beweise braucht, zum Mate, Glauben, dem kann der Billy Meier auch etwas... Look! And look! Oh, here! Is it here? Is it these types of things? Is it E5? Is it this H one? No, I've seen another. I've seen some others. Hang on, one second. Look, these things. This is what I'm talking about here, mate. And look at these tic tac ones. All right, we've got a couple more. We've got a couple more. Look, check this out. Hang on a second. Disc-shaped UFO glides past mission ship, or was it, or was it NASA's live stream? I don't know for sure. NASA's live streaming. See this stuff, mate. Mate. Mate, this is getting a little bit too bloody real, man. And look, the last one in Japan. Look. Boom. Boom. Look at that. It does look legit. So, what do you reckon about that, mate? Some old school footage there, mate. Some epic stuff. Right, okay. So, I'm about to now record another video. So, make sure you subscribe because then tomorrow you're going to be seeing another one. All right? Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, my name's Casey and this is Mindseed TV. Today, I'm just gonna be stirring up that pot. I got a bunch of awesome clips to share with you guys from new alien sightings, paranormal encounters, and some creepy, unexplainable events caught on camera. Also, I saw some comments on the last few videos of people saying that it's not actually me during these intros and that this is the AI version of me. I can assure you, it is I. Me here in the studio in the flesh. I'm just nice on camera. So before we jump in, if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining. Hit that subscribe button down below and that little bell icon so you don't miss the newest uploads whenever I drop them. And if you're not new to the channel, welcome back. Let's jump into today's video. In this next video, a family is celebrating a birthday 
The husband is recording the video of his wife and kids on his phone and claims that they were the only five people in the house. However, they caught something extremely strange and unexplainable. It appears that there was another person present for just a brief moment. Watch closely. The silhouette of a child can be seen quickly passing by the television in the background. What makes it even more odd is the way the little girl moves as she passes by. It doesn't appear she's running or walking, but almost as if she glides past the TV unnaturally. Yeah, no, I'm leaving. The family has watched this back multiple times and has no way to explain who or what this could have been. They never encountered such a thing after this event, but it remains a mystery. Was there a ghost of a little girl joining them for the birthday celebration, or was it something else? What do you think? Next, a submarine team was exploring deep below the Greenland Sea, much deeper than any human being would be able to swim. As they were 400 meters below the sea level, the members of the submarine were talking among one another when suddenly, the outside camera of the vessel captures something strange. A strange hand touches the outer camera of the ship. Caught off guard by the sound of whatever this was, one of the members jumps looking back at the screen only catching a glimpse of the hand. Looking closely, it almost has an amphibian appearance to it with webbed fingers, but the shape of the hand resembles a human. But that's not all that they capture. As the hand pulls away for just a brief moment, a strange creature can be seen looking back at the submarine. Some people think that this was an elaborate hoax. Others claim mermaids or sirens. And some even think it's underwater aliens. Whatever it was, it's hard to find an explanation to what this could have been. This next video was captured by a surveillance camera in Turkey. In the video, a man is outside closing up his shop when a mysterious person walks by and gently taps him on the shoulder. As the man turns to look and see who touched him, he instantly notices a large metal sign hanging out of a truck passing by that was about to hit him. Luckily, he looked back at the right time to avoid getting seriously injured. This video stirred up a frenzy online. Who was this mysterious person that tapped him on the shoulder and kept walking? It was almost as if he knew danger was coming and gave him a friendly warning. However, how he would know that this event was about to happen is unexplainable. He never looked back and he didn't stop to talk to the man that he touched. Some people claim it was a time traveler. Others believe that this was a guardian angel protecting the shop owner. Or maybe it was just a man playing a prank on a random stranger. Whatever you choose to believe, the timing of these events seems too precise to be a coincidence. So what do you think? Was this a being from a parallel dimension? An angel? Or just a coincidence? Let me know your thoughts down below. In this next video, a news reporter believes that they captured something paranormal while filming a story on a car accident. This video ended up making it to cable TV as something unexplainable caught on camera. After reporting the story, once the news crew got back to the editing bay, what they found was something horrifying. A face of a little girl appears looking out of the car briefly. That is a ghost. No one could explain who or what this was as there was no one on the scene during the time of reporting the accident. But the entire editing crew could not deny seeing the face of a little girl inside the vehicle. Many people in the comment section of this video say the same thing. That's not a little girl, that's a demon. And the face looks evil. The closer we look, the creepier it appears to be. Considering that this made it to national TV and was captured by a news crew, it's hard to believe that this was fabricated. So what do you think happened? What did they actually catch on camera? I would love to hear your thoughts. In this next clip, a man was on vacation spending a day on the beach in Florida when he noticed something very strange out in the water. appears to be a very long snake-like creature can be seen surfacing, followed by another strange tentacle lifting out of the water. While this sighting was very brief, it raised a lot of questions as to what this could have been. 
Was this a giant squid? A kraken-like octopus? Or maybe even a giant sea snake? Although sightings like this are much more common in deep waters, why was this so close to the shore? What would you have done if you were in the water enjoying a day on the beach and saw something like this only 50 feet away from you? Another strange video captured near the beach in Venezuela shows something very odd happening in the sand. Something appears to be emerging from below the ground, but whatever it is, it's extremely large in size. A few of the comments in the comments section said, I've seen the movie Tremors, time to run for your life. Other people said that that's aliens from War of the Worlds. I found it quite humorous reading people's theories in the comments section, and that's the main reason that I decided to include this clip in this video. I'm dying to hear what you think is actually happening here. If you're enjoying today's video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and that little bell notification so that you get notified every time a new scary video like this drops in the future. Anyone who knows me by now should know that it would be impossible for me to make an unexplainable video segment without looking towards the skies. In this next clip, a woman captures a strange sound coming from the sky outside of her home in broad daylight. Listen. Inside, baby. What the fuck is that? Okay, but really, what the fuck? The sound goes on for a while, but then it starts to die down. However, the sounds return once again shortly after, causing her to go back outside and continue filming. Please tell me you guys hear this. Wait for it. If you watched the last video I uploaded called Insane Sounds Coming From The Sky, doesn't this last noise sound familiar? It resembles the sounds of family captured on Lake Hum in Australia. What the f*** is that? What the f***? Two people in different parts of the world capturing similar creepy sounds coming from the sky. But what is it? Let me know what you think this sound could be that multiple people around the world are capturing. What the f in this next clip, a man captures some very strange black rings floating in the sky. While this looks creepy as hell and would leave many people scratching their heads in disbelief, there may be a fairly logical explanation to what is happening here. There was a concert taking place just a few blocks away from where this footage was captured, and these smoke rings are likely due to pyrotechnics being set off at the show. Sometimes when flames shoot out during performances, these black smoke circles emerge. And although this clip may have an explanation, the next few don't. Right at the end of last year, December 29th, 2023, a girl in Switzerland uploads an incredible sight that she captured in the sky. A strange beam of light is hovering in the clouds and emitting some sort of strange light rays beside it. And what appears to be a portal or a black hole can be seen opening up. Do you not see anything wrong with this? If this is actually happening in the sky, guys, I'm sorry, but we have big problems coming our way. Many people in the comments say that this was sighted very close to the underground CERN location, which tests splitting particles and creating black holes. So what do you think? Could this be chalked up to a natural phenomenon? CGI? Government testing? Or aliens? In this next clip, a man is sitting in his car when he notices a strange glowing object entering the atmosphere. Are you serious? What the, fuck? the object appears to have a large ring ahead of it, 
almost as if it had some sort of force field. It's almost as if there was some sort of pressure far ahead of whatever this was. Maybe this is just light reflecting off of the clouds as it enters the orbit, but it's very strange seeing as the object is so far behind the light ring. So what do you think? Is this a meteor entering our orbit? Or some sort of advanced technology creating a force field around whatever it is? As always, I look forward to hearing your thoughts and your theories. In this next short clip, two boys notice an abnormal green laser shooting downwards from the sky during a lightning storm. They recorded the storm for a while, hoping to catch it again, and luckily, they were able to record one instance of the green light. At first, I thought maybe this was someone shooting a laser pointer or a spotlight upwards from the ground, and the clip was being played in reverse to make it appear like it was coming downwards. But after looking at the footage in reverse, that would be impossible. The laser moves over a large area on the ground while remaining in one place from up above, which means it was definitely coming from the sky. While this clip is extremely short, it caught my attention as I have never encountered anything like this before. So how would you explain this? Some friends were driving along the highway when one of them notices a strange black object that appears to be swimming through the sky. You all see that mother What? is this yep sounds about right y'all see this mother just some weird shit swimming through the sky another day out here in middle america what the is this it has an almost squid like body and can be seen moving along at a continuous pace some people claimed it was a kite but kites should be hovering in one place anchored to the ground or held by someone not moving through the clouds another person captured the same type of object while driving through the city there have been many comments claiming that this is something called air dolphins, a government weapon designed to take down aircrafts. However, there is no information online about such a thing. If it is some sort of government aircraft designed for homeland security, I'm sure they wouldn't want there to be public knowledge of it. So what do you think? Is this some sort of secret weapon or possibly an extraterrestrial spaceship? In this next video, a man in Germany captures something strange floating in the sky. It almost appears to be some sort of giant tomb just hovering up in the clouds. The passengers in the car are freaking out as they have no explanation as to what they are seeing. However, something even more odd happened on this day. There were multiple sightings in other countries of similar objects floating in the same way around the same time. What do you think these could be? Are they alien spaceships and UFOs? Or are we just going to believe that these are more weather and spy balloons? This next video made it onto the news. A man in Oklahoma captures a strange object in the sky. At first it appears that whatever it is is entering the orbit or coming into our atmosphere slowly. It continues to thrust downwards for a period of time as if it's slowing down, and then at one point things get very interesting. It switches gears and accelerates, launching it back out of our atmosphere. Personally, I've seen tons of SpaceX shuttle launches and watched them exit the orbit, but this object was different. The way it entered our atmosphere only to turn around and launch back out at insane speeds. I'm really not sure what this could have been. If you have any idea or explanation as to what you think this was, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Alright, well, that was fun. I had fun. And I hope that you did too, so be sure to stick around for more cool videos like this. And if you'd like to support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I'll leave a link down below in the description. It helps out big time for content creators like myself. And I'm really grateful that you guys keep coming back, tuning in again and again. Uh, one more thing, before you go, I have another video that I think you're really gonna like. I think that you're gonna like 
this one. You guys do know that when I do this right here and I look up like that, there's no video there. I have to actually add this post edit into YouTube. And then I'll probably put like a playlist right here or something that you can check out. Thank you guys so much. I will catch you next time. Peace. In a previous episode, we debunked this viral UFO video out of Miami as a fake, in part because there was only one witness. What the f is that? Holy. Now we look to the Florida skies again. This time, we have lots of witnesses. And thankfully, one was a loyal viewer who sent us his own video. February 9th, 2021, Southern Florida. Stuart Eck is on the road when a flash of light makes him pull over. It's not the police, it's this. Oh my goodness. Awesome, it's sunrise. A large white plume unfurls across the sky, growing larger and larger. He's not frightened, but he is amazed. You see the shockwave go out? Oh, wow, awesome! I looked over and uh, it was a giant flame in the sky. Take another look. As the light passes over Stewart, it leaves behind a massive trail. It ballooned out like it was exploding or something very different was going on. And it was one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. Not everyone Stewart talked to was as smitten with the object. Unbelievable. It scared a lot of people to death thinking it was some type of, of weapon coming in from outer space. Florida is a UFO hotspot. It's actually second only to California. There have been 7,000 sightings of UFOs in Florida since 1998. But UFOs are consistently reported to fly without leaving visible exhaust or contrails. And there's another theory, a very human, high-tech weapon reported to leave a distinctive exhaust trail. The Chinese military already claims to have developed something called a hypersonic missile. As the name suggests, it travels at five times the speed of sound at low altitude. That's a game changer because such a weapon could make it from the human missile silos in central China to Washington, D.C., evading radar and existing air defense systems until it is already well over U.S. airspace. And American nuclear submarines reportedly now have their own hypersonic missile, dubbed the Sea Dragon. So that might be what Stewart witnessed. Another theory? This is some new rocket being developed by a space entrepreneur like Elon Musk. Notice how both this 2017 SpaceX launch and the one in Stewart's video have glowing contrails due to an effect you may have seen in an earlier episode about a suspected Chinese rocket. While it's dark on the ground, the rocket and its contrails are high up enough to be illuminated by the sun, even though it's over the horizon. But exactly what sort of rocket, missile, or other craft could be creating the huge exhaust trail in Stewart's video is a mystery. SpaceX's Falcon 9 has become the most flown operational U.S. rocket, reaching orbit 24 times in 2020. So could this be another Elon Musk venture? Or is there something else more troubling going on? First, astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio considers if this could be a jet going supersonic. When the jet approaches the sound barrier, you'll see a condensation front along the front of the jet. In moist air, a speeding plane creates low pressure areas where water condenses in a vapor cone. As the plane speeds up, the cloud moves down the body. And when the plane breaks through the sound barrier, it outraces the water droplets and the cone disappears. What we're seeing here, though, is a continuous plume that's persistent. So this is definitely not a supersonic jet. Our aviation expert, Tim McMillan, thinks he can narrow it down further. That teardrop shape and, and that contrail there, that is characteristic of uh, you know, some type of rocket or potentially a, a missile test. But when McMillan checks the SpaceX launch schedule, he rules out any Elon Musk-related UFOs. So could this be a new weapon system, like the Sea Dragon? The U.S. is just now kind of getting into the hypersonics game and, and trying to develop more operational hypersonic platforms. When D'Antonio digs deeper, he finds the U.S. military had tested submarine-launched missiles in the area that day. But the military won't say what exactly was launched. If it was a missile test of some kind, it's probably a missile that they don't want you to know about. Despite the strange appearance, we're calling this one a rocket or missile launch. 
But what rocket or missile, we may never know. What's clear is that the U.S. is in a race to develop unstoppable hypersonic missiles, so we may be witnessing one of the very first tests. Quebec, 2018. A French-speaking family is on an outing, enjoying a cloudless day when they notice something in the sky and start recording. A bizarre object rotates slowly, seeming to shine bright red and green lights as it turns. We push in and stabilize the image to get a better look. As the image comes into focus, you don't have to speak French to grasp the family's astonishment. The family grows increasingly certain they've spotted something extraordinary. And check this out. At moments, it looks like this thing is flaming, something we've never seen before. Is it a craft burning off fuel as it ascends into space? Journalist MJ Banias, a Canadian himself, says his homeland does a thorough job of recording such incidents. Canada has uh, a significant UFO history. We're one of the few countries that actually logs and collects uh, UFO data on a yearly basis and then publishes the results of those findings. There are more sightings of UFOs uh, over Quebec than in any other Canadian province. Whatever this thing is, it's not making any noise, and it's not clear how it stays aloft. The object is quite curious to me because it seems to have no visible means of propulsion, maybe even uh, exhibiting anti-gravity properties. It's sort of just suspended uh, in air and for a period of time. So this very well could be something not of this world. So we've done stories of UFOs spotted at forest fires, hovering around flaming volcanoes, and even flying into the sun's corona. But this is a rare instance where a UFO almost looks like it's on fire. To shed some light on what we're seeing, we turn the video over to our experts. First, video analyst Mark D'Antonio examines the video and its metadata to see if we can trust it. As far as the video being something that was faked or hoaxed, I don't believe that that's the case. I think that this is an actual object. This object doesn't have propellers or produce exhaust, so our experts eliminate a drone or plane. And the sky is completely clear, so D'Antonio rules out a cloud. This is not anything weather related. Where there's no sun, it's dark under there, and where there is sun, it's bright. It kind of shows us that it's a 3D object being illuminated by the sun. And what looks like fire might not be flame, but really a glint of sunlight off a shiny surface, says aviation expert Tim McMillan. It's something that appears to have a very highly reflective surface. It's reflecting sunlight, uh, very much like a mirror. And so all of that is very characteristic of a bright, shiny silver mylar party balloon. And at one point, you can almost make out a shape, uh, maybe an H, or uh, you know, at some point, it almost maybe looks like a horse. D'Antonio and McMillan think it's a balloon of some sort that's reflecting light so intensely it looks like it's on fire. But neither can explain exactly why the reflected light is so red, why the colors sometimes shift, or even why it's that strange shape. I can't say it's not a UFO, unequivocally, but I do believe it's a Mylar balloon. So, our verdict? The deciding moment for us is when the object turns sideways. We have to agree with our experts. With its wrinkles and strange shape, it sure looks like a partially deflated balloon. But we don't know what the letter is supposed to be. So it's a UFL, unidentified flying letter? I think it's an N. February 2020, an Airbus A320 is on a routine flight soaring over Medellin, Colombia. Little does the captain know he's about to find out he's sharing the friendly skies. The pilot does us the favor of showing his altimeter, and we can see that he's flying uh, around 30,000 feet in altitude. The pilot then points his camera phone out of the cockpit window and watch this as he zooms in. A metallic looking object, a polyhedron of some sort, whizzes by in a straight line. We slow it down and zoom in further. You can see it kind of looks like a cube. It has uh, these kind of little points that stick out. It does seem to be darker in color and not um, like a bright, shining balloon. Whatever this is, it definitely shouldn't be there. 
Now, it's hard to judge this object's size without knowing how far away it is, but scientist Amy Eskridge estimates it's 10 to 15 feet in diameter. One theory is that if we were visited by another civilization, they might send probes ahead of when they actually come. And consider this. A similar object was spotted by an F-A-18 fighter pilot in 2018 at an altitude of 35,000 feet. It still hasn't been identified, and its structure, unlike any known airframe, lends credence to the alien probe theory. They might want to collect data, maybe do a little surveillance, a little monitoring before they actually show up. In the U.S., we associate Medellin, Colombia with drug cartels. But in South America, the city is known for UFO sightings. In fact, after UFOs were spotted over a soccer stadium and above a forest, the city earned the title the New Roswell. So we're turning to our experts to see if they can tell us what's going on. I've analyzed several videos in depth of UFOs and UAPs over the course of my career. And the way that it's traveling on screen in the area of the clouds does appear to be consistent with recordings that I have deemed authentic. So while Primo can't find anything technically wrong with the video, something just doesn't look right to him. What caught my eye is when the camera's panning up to the skyline, the operator instinctively zooms in, almost like he's expecting this object as it's coming towards the airplane. This was peculiar to me. So the feel of the video upon visual analysis feels staged. But Primo thinks it's possible the pilot was just plain lucky to zoom in right as the object flies past the plane. MJ Benias agrees. Pilots are the people who work in the sky and operate in it, so they're going to have the best view of any potential UFOs around them. We turn this video over to our aviation expert, Tim McMillan. He thinks whatever was shot over Medellin is too slow to be any kind of plane or missile, and it looks nothing like a drone. Initially, when it starts coming, I thought uh, it's probably a balloon. Regular helium balloons rarely make it to this altitude. When they get this high, the helium expands and the balloon pops. But solar balloons are different. Used as toys or for research, they're usually made from dark material to absorb the sun's heat. They rise as the air inside warms and expands. They've gone as high as 46,000 feet, but in general, when they hit the cooler air up high, they start to lose shape and altitude. It's just too cold for them to stay aloft. It almost seems to have a, an odd uh, cube-like shape. That uh, is exactly what the Navy pilots have reported seeing off the east coast of the United States. They're currently a part of the unidentified aerial phenomena that's being investigated by the Department of Defense. I don't have a good explanation. So, assuming it's not a hoax, it's certainly not a drone or a known aircraft. It's possibly a balloon. I mean, when you look at that speed, your mind goes there. But it's extremely rare for a solar balloon to reach this altitude. By process of elimination, we'll go with genuine UFO. So humans might not be the only pilots up in the sky. November 2020, the Red Rock Desert of Southern Utah. A helicopter crew and state biologists are counting bighorn sheep when something catches their eye. They land and make this astounding discovery. A large shiny silver object yeah. tucked into an almost inaccessible canyon. This is wild. Look closer. From every angle, it's clear this thing does not belong here. Utah keeps its location secret, but news leaks out on social media, and it's quickly labeled the Utah monolith. U.S. Army vet David Serber takes all the secrecy as a challenge. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna find this place, right? It was probably 11 p.m., and I drove for six hours straight through the night to try to get there. David works his way deep into a canyon, I don't see anyone. Just after daybreak, he rounds a corner. There she is. <laughs> and it's just there. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> and uh, it was just a really cool experience to have a few minutes alone with it. There are a few things more iconic than a monolith, whether we're talking about the monolith that started 2001, A Space Odyssey, or the obelisks of ancient Egypt. So when this mysterious metal monument popped up, it really sparked people's imagination. The idea being that possibly 
one of the ways that aliens would contact us would be to leave an information-laden monolith for us to investigate and discover. One focus on the internet was whether the monolith was constructed with alien building materials. The belief was that they are comprised of something called a metamaterial or a metametal. Metamaterials are engineered to have properties not found naturally on Earth. Special composites of metal strands and ceramics are created to absorb radar for stealth technology. And there are reports from reputed UFO crash sites that the craft contain alloys that give them anti-gravity and cloaking characteristics. Accounts of alien metamaterials went mainstream in 2017 with a New York Times article. According to the New York Times report, Bigelow Aerospace was contracted by the government to store possible materials from alien craft. It's believed that the U.S. government is studying these alien materials to create the next generation of weapons. Could the Utah monolith be made of the same sort of alien materials? David tests it. I had a magnet with me, mainly because we were trying to figure out, you know, what type of metal is it? Not sticking. And also, was it a solid object or was it hollow? Not solid. So what's it made of and by whom? Other mysterious monoliths have been discovered recently, often in remote locations, in Romania, the Isle of Wight, and Sweden. Are these objects some sort of alien calling card? Or could they be the product of a very creative and very human mind? And when you first see this, you can't help but think of some type of extraterrestrial technology. However, there's nothing about what we're seeing in this video that leads me to believe it's manufactured from any kind of exotic materials. Unlike reports of UFO metamaterials, the monolith doesn't defy gravity, and it's definitely not cloaked. In person, David noticed fingerprint smudges and ragged corners, as well as other signs of terrestrial construction. The telltale signs of those rivets would make me believe this is man-made, no matter how kind of anomalous its appearance is. For McMillan, that's the giveaway, the signs of ordinary earthbound metalwork. If it is human-made, Kathy Strain has an idea why someone went through all the effort to put it in the middle of nowhere. I think it's, it's a message of beauty, of artwork, maybe makes you in, reflect more that I wanted to come here for the wilderness. Some artists, like Donald Judd, believe that wilderness is the ultimate art gallery and use isolated locations for installation sites. But who made this and what it's made from is almost impossible to determine from a video. Ultimately, you, you're not going to be able to determine exactly what this object is until you get it into a lab and under in-depth analysis. But just as it appeared out of nowhere, the Utah monolith vanished, literally overnight. So until it's found and we can get it into a lab, our verdict? This is not an alien artifact. It's either a human artwork or a hoax. Either way, it's a compelling conversation piece. February 25th, 2021. Residents of Queensland are going about their business when this tears open the sky. Twin bright streaks tracing the same flight path, making this a peculiar video even by today's UFO standards. What the f is that? What the hell is it? That is insane. Look, it's just disappeared. Take a closer look. At first glance, they look like meteors. But do meteors fall in a row like this? And do they have such long tails? Hundreds report seeing these streaking objects. And some suspect they are somehow connected to a secret base almost 1,000 miles away. Another area in Australia that's been known for curious activity would be Pine Gap, Australia. There have been very frequent recordings of all kinds of unexplained things in the night sky in that area. Pine Gap is a top-secret American base in the Australian outback that we know tracks and spies on satellites. Many also believe it conceals an underground city where scientists develop a wide variety of clandestine projects involving UFOs. There are numerous stories of flying disks appearing in the sky over the base, and it's rumored to contain a plasma gun capable of shooting down anything in low orbit. It's alleged that there is a lot of experimentation and dark technology that has gone on there. Construction at Pine Gap started in 1966, the height of the Cold War. So it's often referred to as Australia's Area 51. 
But is there really a connection between Pine Gap and these streaking lights? We turn the video over to the experts. First, we ask astronomer Mark D'Antonio if these flaming objects could just be strange meteors. Meteors move anywhere from 10 to 20,000 kilometers per hour when they hit our atmosphere. This is moving way too slow. It's only moving at a few times the speed of sound. So could these objects have originated from Pine Gap? Our experts look at the key evidence that the objects themselves are on fire and say no. A plasma ray would look like a laser beam or a bolt of lightning, and an exploding missile would send parts flying in all directions, not in this orderly row. So could they be UFOs? If so, NASA's Bob Anderson says an advanced civilization would be unlikely to construct spacecraft that crossed a galaxy only to burn up on arrival. You would not expect it to heat up like that and burn off part of its shield to get into the Earth's atmosphere. Of course, not everything in the sky is a meteor, UFO, or secret weapon. This is sort of the characteristic of a re-entering piece of space debris of some kind. The lightweight materials burn up and fall away first, and the heavy materials like the engines, those continue for quite some time. D'Antonio thinks another big clue is the specific location of the site. To the right of Australia in the Pacific is a location that's called the Satellite Graveyard. And when satellites are purposefully deorbited to crash back to Earth, they're deorbited into this one spot in the ocean. In fact, Australia is sandwiched between two areas where most satellites are deliberately crashed. More than 300 spacecraft have broken up and dropped there. They are the most remote regions of the ocean and farthest from populated areas. When D'Antonio digs deeper, he finds this object might be an especially big piece of space junk that's separated into these pieces upon re-entry. What this turned out to be was a Chinese long march that was sent to the satellite graveyard in the ocean. China's long march rocket has a massive booster measuring 35 feet long and 9 feet wide. With roughly one satellite crashing into the ocean every few weeks, D'Antonio has some advice. Be very careful when you're out there. You might get hit by a satellite. Okay, joking aside, we're going to agree with D'Antonio and call this one space junk, an expired Chinese rocket. NASA has recently scolded the Chinese for what it considers irresponsible behavior in the disposal of expired space equipment. 2011, a resident of Jerusalem is out for a stroll when a bright light over the old city catches his eye. He begins to film, and this is what his camera captures. A bright ball of light hangs over the old city. Strange on its own, but then it drops down to just above the buildings, hovers, and amazingly zooms straight up, Whoa. literally in the blink of an eye. Watch this last part again. The ball of light seems to be just above roof level. There's a bright flash that stuns the onlookers. Whoa! And it rockets up and out of frame in less than a second. This isn't just happening anywhere. The orb, or whatever it is, is sighted over one of Earth's holiest places, the Dome of the Rock, also known as the Temple Mount. The Dome of the Rock is one of the most important sites in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, where Muhammad ascended into heaven. It's also the site where Abraham uh, was about to sacrifice his son Isaac to God. It is also where Solomon was said to have built the first temple and centuries after it was destroyed, where Jesus cast out the moneylenders of the Second Temple. Could we be witnessing a modern-day miracle? We have lots of stories where people, when they are having a religious moment, see lights in the sky. Because we're at a holy site, maybe something holy is happening. This idea of a UFO Holy Land connection was revived in 2020, when an Israeli space expert sent eyes looking Whoa. towards the heavens with a startling claim. Haim Ashad, who was Israel's space security chief, went on record claiming that Earth was being visited by extraterrestrials. You literally had the highest ranking official of Israel's space program coming out publicly stating that there was a galactic federation of, of alien races. Ishad, who was promoting a book at the time, has never revealed his sources, but he's not the only believer in this federation. It is said that the Federation consists of hundreds of thousands of members and was founded millions of years ago. Well, I believe this statement by the Israeli Space Secretary is the truth. 
This whole idea of the Galactic Federation can be traced back to the Eisenhower administration in 1950. There were numerous reports that he had contact with an extraterrestrial. Haim Eshed says that as part of the pact, we're allowing aliens to conduct experiments on Earth, and we built a joint underground base on Mars. So is this object a UFO, a known craft, or a bit of video hocus pocus? First, could this be Israel's Iron Dome missile system? It has been used to detect and shoot down over 2,000 rockets. The problem with that is it shoots up. <laughs> it doesn't come down like this does. Number two, the object ends up hovering. The defense system doesn't do that. As far as whether that could be a drone, there's a lag time when you add full power. We didn't see that. It just went boom, straight up in the air. So that takes drone out of the equation. That seems to narrow it down to one option, a UFO. If the video is real, we run it by Michael Primo's expert on. So I began the analysis with media interrogation, noted that there was insufficient uh, digital information to verify it as a camera original. The metadata was scarce. Whoa. That likely means the video was run through at least one software program, stripping away much of the metadata. Upon further analysis, we applied macro block visualization. This essentially means that the software took that information out, and those gradient values aren't actually recorded in the original recording. So in conclusion, uh, this recording should not be considered authentic. Whoa! It looks like someone had some fun making this video, so we're gonna call it a hoax. But this in no way disproves the Galactic Federation claim. According to Haim Eshed, the aliens